Our mission is to bring awareness through education. So we are trying to encourage the beekeeping community and non-beekeepers to at least become aware and interested in the topic of beekeeping and sustainable beekeeping. And these are some of the organizations that we work with. Anywhere that you think we might be able to put a beekeeping system, we've probably done it. We have identified schools as a great place for our system to be located. And Carolina Biological is helping us to build some kits and educational kits around it to use our tools as a centerpiece and build off of it as enrichment for what the kids are learning with STEM and next generation science standards and all of those educational standards around the country. You probably all know who Organic Valley is, right? So we are working with them over the course of this year to build out a special customized programming for a lot of their organic farmers who want to leverage beekeeping as a tool to increase yields in their farms. Braze is a farm to table restaurant in RSA in downtown Milwaukee. We're putting these things on rooftops all over cities as well. So a little bit about what we do. Awareness, education, equipment. We talk about beekeeping systems. Why do we talk about beekeeping systems? Because we understand that what happens in the colony of bees is a biological system. We can't just give somebody the equipment and say good luck. So we provide education and training. Whether we come and install it, we'll give you a one hour session on just doing some basic maintenance. And then we have a whole education and training center on our website. So we all understand the problem. We all understand what's going on. It's a complex problem. There is no one singular thing that we know is causing colony collapse. It's not about one beekeeper having thousands of hives. It's about many beekeepers having fewer hives, managing fewer colonies, being able to do the things and build relationships with their bees. Bees are biological systems. So this is what I'm really excited about because there needs to be some sort of data feedback loop. The image that you see up here is a screenshot from our software and started with a checklist, what we call our hive inspection checklist. And we teach all of our beekeepers what they need to look for and track during their inspection. And then we teach them, you go bar by bar, what to look for. So you're tracking the history of a colony so that we can understand what's working, what's not working, and as well as, just like in human medicine, we're not just treating symptoms, we're treating the causes and the root of all the symptoms. This is an image of some of the information that we've been able to track and analyze. So you can see the history of one colony from week to week to week. If you understand what's happening on every bar, you understand the growth and the shrinkage of maybe honey or nectar in each of those bars. You understand the brood chamber or the brood and how it's growing or shrinking over time. You begin to understand the patterns you begin to recognize and you can build predictive algorithms over time. So if we can predict these things by building an aggregated database, that's extremely helpful. And beyond this, we have began to build relationships with researchers across the country to be able to look at this data. So we go back to this advocacy community outreach piece. We put these things in schools. So each of these kids is holding a bee right now. They're having fun. They're getting interested in science. And not only that, more importantly, they're learning. And, and that doesn't look dangerous at all, does it? Did you say they're each holding a bee? They're each holding a bee, a honeybee. Drone? Some of them drones. Some of them drones. <laughs> <laughs> to give you a little bit of idea about our philosophy around beekeeping, less intervention, support the bees in their natural biological systems, and then create some sort of feedback loop to be able to test whether or not that's actually working. If we can just let bees be bees, they've done it for thousands and thousands of years. What if, instead of giving them foundation, we just gave them a bar and said, build what you would do in nature? What we have found when, when that happens is that if they start, right, if you can get the first comb straight and build from there, they'll build it straight. One of the things we've looked at is we focus this year, we actually put, um, we have an apiary in Milwaukee, but we also created two other nuke nurseries here in Wisconsin, because we wanted to do some testing. We're really trying to build genetics of Wisconsin bees. We're building local genetics. We talked about survivor bees, but we focus a lot on nutrition. Right? If I eat McDonald's every day, or eat the same thing every day, it's not good, right? We like diverse nutrition because we understand in our world that if, if there's diversity of nutrition, even with pets, even with you know, whatever you have, that's important. So it's the same thing with bees. So we leave the honey in there throughout the winter. We will harvest in the spring. So we don't harvest in the fall. 
because that's what they eat. That's why they're making it in the first place. We're not about you know, producing mass quantities of honey. We get enough for the people who own this. People will get enough honey out of this over time. So our goal is to make sure they have as much food as possible that they need throughout the winter. Did we all know this, that, that constantly Wisconsin's in the bottom like five in losses every year? Uh, in 20, 2015 to 2016, Wisconsin had 60%. So bottom five in success, top five in losses. So, so this graph is explaining percentage of honeybee colony lost by state. So part of our sustainable practices is do as much preparation prior to the cold as possible. So if your bees aren't doing well, start feeding them. And one of the things we talk about is instead of using sugar, try and find some raw honey and use that instead in your syrup. We always suggest in these groups, we understand that you're trying to produce honey. Why not give it a chance with 5% of your hives, 10% of your hives? Give them as much food as possible and see how they do in comparison to the ones where you're harvesting in the fall. Just see what happens.